Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and in this episode I'm going to do a retro review, but it's also a fairly current review of the Panasonic ZS100. Um, Now, this has a new version, the ZS200, but it's essentially the same except it has a better EVF and a longer zoom lens. But a lot of the mechanics and all that are, are pretty much similar. So this is a, a pertinent review. Now, when I reviewed this camera a few years ago, I didn't like it. I thought that the JPEGs coming out of the camera were really bland. And I know people would say shoot and raw, but I'm a JPEG shooter. That's just the way it is. Um, the other thing that I found maddening about this camera was trying to use the not so good EVF because I was constantly touching the screen and just it was I was having a not, not a very good time with it so uh, that was a few years ago on a vacation last year when I went to Alaska with my family I brought along a, a Panas uh, excuse me an Olympus OMD EM10 which I like very much and a couple of lenses and surprisingly uh, another camera that I like very much was the Canon G9X this little tiny pocketable one inch sensor camera which you know I just thought did a great job and I loved using that camera so this year I had to pare down things even more just because of our travel constraints and I thought I would go with uh, this camera again and try to modify it in a way that I'd find it more usable so the two things that I did was one I picked a different color profile Profile. Instead of picking the standard profile, I picked Vivid. I like things punchy, and they definitely gave me a, a much more pleasing JPEG image. The other thing that I did is that I didn't use it as I normally would like this. I just used it like I would use a phone. You know, I kind of held it out, and I just used the screen. So I had all the advantages of the touch screen, plus I wasn't getting my nose stuck on everything and changing the focus points and all of that. And those two changes did make a dramatic difference in how I liked using the camera. So those are two things that I like about the camera. Camera. Let me tell you a few things that also that I like about the camera, and then I'll tell you some things that I don't like the cam- about the camera, and, and maybe some better options. So again, this would be per- pertinent to this camera, the the um, ZS100, but also the newer camera, the ZS200. Well, first of all, so those things I like. Second thing I like is that it's relatively compact. It has a very decent zoom range, and it really has just about anything you would want to use in a camera. When I needed to use it in more manual modes, I could do that. If I chose to use a scene mode, there were tons of scenes. There were also uh, things like panorama and HDR modes. Uh, You have a lot of accessible controls in the back that are really easy to use and and fairly straightforward. Of course, you have a pop-up flash, which is a complete, that tilts back, which is a complete must when you're out and about and trying to get a little bit better image and you don't have all of your equipment with you. Um, I also that wasn't thrilled, but I liked well enough the Wi-Fi uh, to connection to my phone and the app. Uh, like all these apps, you're looking at little tiny thumbnails which are, which are hard for me to see, but that would go for this and any other camera that has a Wi-Fi app. But it, w- it was good enough to transfer some images, images to my phone so I could post them to Facebook and things like that. So all in all, it is a lot of really great features and it's very solidly built too. What didn't I like about it? Well, I would say the images that I took in regular or pretty decent light were great. They were very good images. But it really, things really fell apart when I had high dynamic range issues, much more than other one inch sensor cameras that I've used. So if I had a lot of, I was in these areas where it was like bright on rocks and, and uh, more shade, the rocks would be completely blown out. Uh, it just did not look very good. Um, I also found that uh, just in dark situations, the, the images came out really pretty noisy. I mean, more noisy than, than I would expect. So when I thought about the images, and again, they're, they're perfectly good images and very nice, I really kind of thought they looked much more like out of, a, I would say out of a regular compact camera, a regular one over 2.3 inch sensor camera, the kind of zoom, super zooms that have been out forever. And really not, similar to other one inch sensor cameras that I've, I've played around with. So this is my opinion, your opinion might vary, but my suggestion is if you are looking for a camera like this, and again, it is a pretty good camera, um, I would suggest that you save the money and go with, well, I know the older version was the ZS60. That's this this camera with a bigger zoom on it and a smaller sensor. And you're probably going to get pretty similar images. Or you can go with like a Sony WX, whatever their number is now, 300, 500, whatever, or, or any of these other kind of compact uh, one over 2.3 inch sensors. Because I, I found the image quality good, 
but similar to a, one of those types of sensors. So would I recommend that you buy this particular camera? Um, just like I did before, or the same thing I would say with the ZS200, I would probably not buy it myself again. Um, would I buy the one inch, uh, the, the one over 2.3 inch sensor version of this camera? Well, I mean, if I didn't have any other cameras like that, I probably would, because I think it's a, a pretty good camera for what it does. But since I do have cameras similar to that already, some of the Sony cameras, for instance, probably not. Anyways, that's my little opinion on the ZS100 and ZS200 cameras. Your opinion may vary. If it does, list them below. If it's similar, list it below. If you have a stupid, jerky comment, grow up. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Uh, I did reach my 4,000 subscribers. It took me years and years and years to do it, but I did reach 4,000 subscribers. So I am very, very, very happy and grateful to all of you who have subscribed. Um, if you'd like uh, to know more about me, read my personal blog. It, 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 it uh, talks about my uh, it, movement into retirement and figuring out what I'm going to do with myself. Uh, that's drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. If you would like to just hear a little bit more about psychology or, or raising children or whatever, uh, listen to my blog, which I do with my wife. It's called uh, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed, and you can find that on iTunes. And bye-bye.